watched all over Europe, uh, Africa, as well mm -hmm. as here in the US. And um, we have to make sure that we have good quality in terms of what goes out so that we can <coughs> ensure that the service is good. <coughs> right, we're good? All right. All right, so we're going to go into the teaching that we have set up for today. And the teaching that we're going to be dealing with, um, if I may just start from the top again, which is uh, destroying the unity on uh, Salakidat, destroying the Trinity. Okay. Destroying the Trinity. We learned that the most obvious place to, to begin is with the offshoot of the, de of the denominations that are known today as the Roman uh, Catholic faith, which is Catholicism. Okay. In that, we, we recognize that the term uh, Catholic, uh, it means universal. So it's a universal church. It is the church, in fact, that depicts and pushes sun worship. That's right. So the, the, the Catholicist faith believes in sun worship. That's why it's apropos for them to have church or services, as they call it, on a Sunday. Whether we like this or not, every church that has a service on a Sunday is a sun worshiper. Now, I know that sounds hard, especially for many of us who come from the background where we were the Sunday go-to-worship church uh, individuals. Now, if you still have members or family and friends who still go to church on a Sunday, whether they like to hear this or not, it's the truth. And you can slice it any which way you like. They are sun worshippers. Uh -huh. There is nothing in the Bible, in any of the scriptures, in the 66 books, plus the Apocrypha, where it mentions the fact that a person can indeed worship on a Sunday. In fact, everywhere... In either of these books, where you will read that the subject matter of worshiping on a Sunday exists, that is pagan worship. Can't? So we recognize that this was, in fact, one of the deployments of Emperor Constantine. And we established that Constantine himself was, in fact, a Jake. He was a black man. Now, many people don't like to hear that. Because, especially in the so-called uh, Caucasoid world that, that we live in, where they are ruling right now, but to understand even the Roman Catholic faith, faith and, and to even look into the history of it, it goes all the way back to Nimrod. Now, how's them apples? Mm. Nimrod is the forefather of Roman Catholicism. Guess what? Another black man. Mm -hmm. This time, a black man who is Hamite. Hmm. Now, for those who are in a Roman Catholic faith, if they were to go back and look back to the very basis of it, they'd realize you are serving under the direction and the ostracies of a black uh, man. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so when we look even further, we understand that even the term, the original title that was given for Christ in, in the Greek, it really is a Greek word, and it means Christos. And it's spelled with a K. K-R-I-S-T-O-S. Christos. Which is also related to the Indian word of Krishna. The Krishna word that, that we come used to is, is the term that is used, especially even in modern society, as Hare Krishna. All these titles simply means anointed one. Hmm. Now, in that, we also realize that they were trying to develop and create their own likeness to the Hebrew uh, uh, prophet that we call the Amashia. Mm. Now, they could never do that because none of them were ever sent from the Most High God. Mm. Now, Trinity teaches that God exists in three distinct divine individual offices, and that all three of them operate co-equally, which is nonsense. Mm. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
That's a nonsense because anything that has three heads creates confusion. Are you with me so far? All right. So there can only be one, one God, one God who is father of us all. And that's it. There's, he said there will be no other God before him. Right. Now, let's also look into what then is uh, Yahweh Shai, whom the word ignorant calls Jesus. Let's look into it and begin the teaching. Let's go to First, uh, sorry, First Timothy chapter 3 and 16. First Timothy, First Timothy, when, you, when you're there, say I'm there. Sure. First Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16, let's read. The book of First Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy. And without what? And without oh, controversy. controversy. So it says, and without controversy. Go ahead. Great is the mystery of godliness. Great is what? Great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. Go on. God was manifest in the flesh. So God manifests in the flesh. Sure. Now this comes, this is a term that you'll find that the oneness movement use. Oneness movement, those who believe that there's one God um, of all, that there is no one else, just one God. Okay? All right. But this also comes under a teaching that is called modalism. Modalism. Make a note of it. M-O-D-A-L-I-S-M. -S modalism. That's another teaching in itself. So that's where it stems from when you're speaking about the one God in that regards. Now, let's finish that verse, please. God was manifest in the flesh. He was manifested how? In the flesh. Go on. Justified in the spirit. Now, there are some people that believe that in this chapter, it's speaking about Jesus Christ playing three roles. He plays the role of Father, he plays the role of Son, and he plays the role of the Holy Ghost. But that is not correct. That's right. Now, uh, read it again from the top, if you please. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Go on. And without controversy. And without argument. Great is the mystery of the of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So notice, so that we understand, it's a great is the mystery of godliness, um, uh, it, and it has a a colon there. So we know that this mystery, it is it is great and it is without controversy. Go on, come. God was manifest in the flesh. Go on, justified in the spirit. Seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the on the like you believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now, in this teaching, it shows in, in this modalism teaching, it shows that that Jesus Christ, who plays God, who plays the Father, I should say, in the Old Testament, plays uh, the Son in the New Testament. And after his dissension, he plays the Holy Ghost. But notice, he does this at all different times. Mm. Three different times. In other words, the Father isn't around when the Son's around, and the Son isn't around when the Father's around, and, and the Son isn't around when the Holy Ghost is around. They're all op operating in different time space, which goes against the Scripture because it goes completely against Daniel chapter 7. Mm. You see? Because in Daniel chapter 7, we read where the Father and Son uh, it appears right there, right before our eyes. Now, now that we've read that, I want to go to 2 John chapter 1 and 7. 2 John chapter 1 <coughs> and verse 7. Come, the book of 2 John chapter 1 and verse 7, it reads, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yahweh Shai HaMashiach is come into the flesh. See that? Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. First John, it's like he, Second John, chapter 1, verse 7. For many deceivers. There are many deceivers. Go on. Are entered into the world. Go on. Who confess not that Yahweh Shai HaMashiach is come into the flesh. Go on. 
This is a deceiver and an antichrist. And so see what it says? An antichrist. Anti of Christ. Got that? Now from here, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. This is read. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 5. It reads, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, go on, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body that thou, Salaki, hast thou prepared for me. So, what is it saying here? Who can tell me? What does it say here? What does it mean? Yes, sir. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. You know, the Father got tired of sacrifices because people were playing the sin and then make the sacrifice. And then so and so at that point he was like, he said, I don't want these anymore. But then he said, but he found a way to remove all of all of, all the need for that through your house shot and sacrifice. Let's read verse five again, please, sir. Hebrews chapter ten, verse five. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But a body has so, thou. But notice what it says. It says, but a body has thou prepared me. Come. Let us know that the Son came into this world in a body Come. that is likened to this world. And therefore, if it's likened to this world, what is it subject to then? Mm. Go ahead, Fred. Grace and peace. Because he came into a physical human body, it was subject to uh, sickness, disease, and everything just like everybody else. It, it, so everything that affected everybody else would also affect him, uh, right? You've got a point. Go yes, ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. The book of First Timothy, chapter two and verse five. Go ahead. It reads: For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So we see then that this body here that was used was used to be what? The, the, it tells us clearly here. Come on, brother. Come on. It's right in front of us. What is it saying? Grace and peace. Grace and peace. What, what is it saying? That, that at that time there would be no more, no more animal sacrifice. He was, uh, no. Yeah. Hold it. Read, quote, and read what he just <coughs> read before. And and everybody, here's the pen. Write it down right next to the verse five. Go ahead. First Timothy chapter two, verse five. For there is one God and one mediator between <coughs> God and men, the man Yahweh Shai Hamashiach who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, go back now and read Hebrews chapter 10 and 5. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Thou wouldest not, listen, but a body. What we just read in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, right? Con, Go on. Has thou prepared me? Con. Are you seeing the connection now? I need to get some feedback because I need to know that you're getting this. Because when I ask you later, you'll look at me like I was in Wonderland. So here we are now. Let's take it a step further, if you please. Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8. Yes, sir. Hebrews 1 and 8. Let's go there. The Watch book this, of sir. Hebrews. Chapter 1 and verse 8. But unto the Son he saith. Listen carefully. Go on. Thy throne. Thy what? Thy throne. Unto the Son it says what? He saith. Go on. Thy throne, O God, is forever. So he says, thy throne, O God, is forever. Go on. And ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Of what? Of thy kingdom. Read on. Thou hast loved righteousness. Read. And hated iniquity. Therefore, God 
even thy God have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Even God, the, even thy God. Come. Are you seeing that? Come, come. <laughs> what does it mean? Come on. What does it mean? We just read it. What does it mean? Well, grace and peace. All right. You, sir. Yeah, and basically, again, it's letting us know that, uh, that he was like us, just like us in every way. Yes. And that uh, the, the whole basic deal is, when the Father says, Even God, God thy God, God, you know, has anointed you or basically... Uh, uh, put you in a position above everybody else. Come on. That's it. Have you seen that? Now, do I need to make it any clearer? Can I do want to add anything to that? Con, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. He's talking to his father. All right? So there's no confusion here. No confusion whatsoever. Huh? Now, I'm going to keep on doing this through the whole teaching, and I'm going to sound repetitive and redundant <laughs> I have to otherwise guess what you won't remember it and I need you to remember it come on all right so from here what I want you to do go to Isaiah 44 and verse 6 Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6 come this is the book of Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6 the say of the Most High, the King of Israel. Hold it, read it again. Come, the say of the Most High, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer. And his Redeemer. <laughs> huh? Read it again for me, please, Captain. Isaiah chapter 44, and verse 6. Again, I apologize for being overly animated, but I have to do that so that you follow this. Read. The say of the Most High. The King of Israel. Go on. And his Redeemer. And his Redeemer. So, what does it say? What have we just read? What does it say? Go on. Grace and peace. We, uh, the, the one that stood in the, uh, in Thus said the Lord, the, the Lord, King of Israel. Israel. And uh, the Father was always our King. But when he says in his Redeemer, that's, that's speaking of Yahweh. Right. So, read on now, Cap. Read again from the top. Come, thus saith the Lord. The King of Israel. King of Israel, go on. And his Redeemer. And his Redeemer who? The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Go on. I am the first and I am the last. Go on. And beside me there is no God. So right here he said, I, Yahweh, I'm the first, I'm the last. There's none like me. He's, he says, um, there's none beside me. So he's saying, I'm the only God of all of Israel. Hmm. See that? Making it very clear, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, Watch this now. Uh, let's go to our Psalms 82 and verse 6. Psalms 82 and verse 6. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms. Chapter 82 and verse 6. It reads, I have said, ye are God. Hold it. We just read where it said there's no other God. <laughs> so why is he saying ye are gods now? Is he trying to confuse us or what? No, he's not trying to confuse you. He's trying to show you something. So he says, Read it again for me, please. Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. Go on. And all of you are children of the Most High. You are children of the Most High. So we see here that the word gods here really implies judges. Your judges. He is the judge of all, but you are the children of God. You are also judges. But he's trying to make it very clear here. But he says there's no other God beside him. See that? That's what we did. Go back, if you please, quick to um, Isaiah 44 and 6 and read that for me, please. Yes, sir. Again, we're going to keep going back and forth. I need you to get it. Go on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44, and verse 6. Go on. It reads, Thus saith the Most High, King of Israel, and his Redeemer, 
the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So why did he say that? Knowing that in Psalms, chapter uh, 82 and verse 6, mm -hmm. he says, but ye are God. Why did he say that there's none beside you? I'm the first, I'm the last. What is he saying here? Go ahead, man. Yes. So, so what is it? So what? He, what is he? What is he speaking about? His complete a for authority. Exactly. In Isaiah, he's speaking about his complete authority. Read it again, Isaiah. Sorry. Isaiah chapter forty-four, verse six. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. There is what? There is no God. Speaking of his complete authority. Sure. You see, Trinity uh, teaches that all three are in co-existence and they are co-equal. That's what Trinity teaches. But there is no such thing as a trinity. No such thing. But let's take it a step further. Go to Hebrews chapter 1 and 8. Let's go back there. Hebrews chapter 1 and 8. This is going to get very interesting as we go along. I need just a little bit of, I've uh, got a little bit of echo feedback here. Don't mess with the volume. The volume is perfect. I just want you to take out either some of the tribble or just give me a little bit of bottom end, something like that. All right, go ahead. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1 and verse 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever. Thy what? That's it. Thy throne, O God, is forever. Thy throne, O God, is forever. That's it. That's perfect. All right. Yeah. Didn't do nothing? All right. Well... Hallelujah. The Spirit was on it then. Let's go. Read and it. ever. And what? And ever. And ever. A scepter of righteousness. A what? A scepter of, of righteousness. Go on. Is the scepter of thy kingdom. Is the scepter of what? Of thy kingdom. Read verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God. Even what? Even what? thy what? God. Go on. Have anointed thee with the oil. And gladness above thy fellow. Above thy fellow. Now, was he making himself equal here? Read it again, sir, because I, I, I think people have missed it. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Thou read 8, come on down to 9. Come, verse 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Of thy kingdom. Go on. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Above thy fellows. Run quickly to uh, Isaiah. Uh, yes. Run quickly to Isaiah chapter... 61 and 1. Go there real quick and come and read that. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. And verse what? In verse 1. Go on. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Most High have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Stop. Jump to 3. Verse 3. To anoint unto, like you, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. All right, drop that quickly. Go back, if you please, to uh, Hebrews. <coughs> you want to read? Uh, yes, please. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Go on. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Hated what? Hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil 
of gladness. So he was not making him his equal. Come. He was not doing that. Okay. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? All right. From here, what I want you to do, go to Psalms. Go back to Psalms. Psalm 82 and verse 6. Let's go back there, please. Come. The book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. I have said, ye are God. Ye are what? Ye, ye are, are God. God. And all of you are children of the Most High. Now, what does that mean? I told you before. I want to hear it. Go on. Praise be to you are judges. You are judges. All right. Drop that now for me, please, sir. Go to John 14 and John 14, 28. Now, listen to how he puts this. This is going to throw some of you off on a loop. The book of John, chapter 14, and verse 28, it reads. I hope it does throw you on a loop, but let's see what anyone be listening. Go ahead. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. Listen, for, listen carefully now. Go on. For my father is greater than I. So here he tells you his father is greater than him. You know what happens uh, with the mic? When I'm when you're speaking, I'm speaking, uh, the reverb goes out. Okay. We'll have to get some technical help with this. Anyway, go ahead. So I, I, do you understand that he says his father is greater than he? Mm -hmm. That's how come. All right. What does that mean? What does it Go ahead. Grace and peace. It's letting you know that he have a father. They're not no trains. They are different. Yeah, it, let, it lets him know that he has a father, but what? And that his father is the, the authority because he's greater than his he. His father is greater than he. He yeah. makes it very clear. There is no, if his father is greater than him, there's no co-equal. No. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see. But no. got to get your minds to wake up to this. Huh. There's no co-equal. My father is greater than me. Where is the co-equal? That's why some of you, what the scripture says, I and my father will wear the same. No, you're not the same. <laughs> I have a son. He's not the same as me. He comes from me. He looks like me. He has certain quote, uh, quirkisms that are like me, but we're not the same. Why? Because I am greater than he who is my son. Because my son comes from me. For you to come from something makes you less than that thing. If, I, if I'm the one who brought you into this world, I'm greater than you. Um, um. So where do we get this nonsense from? We get it from Trinitarianism. That's right. See that? Yes. Matthew chapter 3. Um, did we read 28 all of it? But yes, sir. Uh, read the next verse, 329. Come, John chapter 14 and verse 29. And now, I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. There it is. So when things have come to pass, when everything that's going to happen happens, you're going to believe at that point because the proof will be self-evident. In other words, I'm going to die mm -hmm. and I'm going to come back and you're going to see that I'm dead and you're going to know that I'm dead and when I come back, you're going to know that a power that is greater than me brought me back to life. Come. That's what he's saying when he reads 20, 29. Come. 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 Matthew chapter 3 and 16. Come. This is the book of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. It reads, And Yahweh, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. So here, um, read 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. 
please go on. Come. Uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Yahweh shy, led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. To Stop. All right. So then he was led up of the Spirit to go into the wilderness. Now let's go back, if you please, to 28. Read that. Um, sorry. Let's go back to um, Matthew uh, 16. Let's read that again. Because Matthew 3 and 16 is, is, is the go-to verse to believe that here it, it proves that there is three. Okay. All right. Now let's explain that. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. And Yehoshua, when he was baptized. So when he was what? Baptized. baptized. All right. Drop that now. Go to Acts chapter 10 <coughs> and verse 38. Okay. Acts 10 and 38. The book of Acts. Chapter 10 and verse 38, it reads, How God anointed Yahweh of Nazareth Go on. with the Holy Ghost. With what? With the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. Now, remember, his baptism was the act of introducing his power and his authority. His baptism was the act of introducing his power and his authority from God, his Father. This verse proves it. Read. How God anointed. How what? How God anointed. How what? How God anointed. Now, I want to drive that word anointed into your head. Anointed who? Read. Yahweh Shai of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. With what? With the Holy Ghost. Read. And with power. And with power. So his power and authority was given to him right. when he was baptized. Khan. Khan? Khan. Read, sir. Who went about doing good. Doing good. And healing all. And, and healing all. That were oppressed. All the oppressed. Of the devil. Of the devil. Now, when it says the oppressed of the devil, it's, that is twofold. It's speaking about the spiritual devil, mm -hmm. but also... The natural devils who were the people, the Romans that they were among, they were the devil also. Okay. <clears throat> because the devil himself gave them authority to rule over them. So they had to be healed from the oppression of the, the spirit of the devil, but also from the natural acts of the devil. Because what was the natural, natural? Because of lack of food and lack of nutrition and lack of all of those things, they some of them became frail and and and, and their bodies were, were destroyed. So what did Yahweh do? He healed their bodies and healed their minds. So he said that they he healed them. Go on, come healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Go on, for God was with him. For God was what? For God, God was, was with, with him. him. For God was with him. Con, Con. go back to Matthew chapter 3 and 16 and read it again, please. The book of Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. And Yehoshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Like a dove. Now let's explain that. Here's your precept for it. John chapter 5. And verse 37, John chapter 5, verse 30. Remember, I gave you the precept to, um, to the first one, which was Acts chapter 10 and 38. And if you didn't write that down, then you would trouble down the road. So let's see. John chapter 5 and verse 37. Let's deal now with the dove as a spirit. Come. The book of John chapter 5 and verse 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, have borne witness of me. Read. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So no one, absolutely no one, has heard his voice. So you get books in, and God told me this, liar, liar, pants on fire. That's right. God doesn't speak to you. God. You don't understand, brother. You don't understand, sister. Say, I have a personal relationship. I know him. He know me. Man. 
Read it again. So. John chapter 5, verse 37. And the Father himself, which have sent me, have borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Now remember, this is Yahweh speaking. Is he a liar? No. He said, none of you have seen him at any time. None of you. None of you have heard him. None of you have even seen his shape or what he looks like. Mm. None of you in creation has had no connection with him at all. The only connection you have with the Father is through the Son. Mm. Are you seeing this? Wow. Let, let's... I don't know the word I did in there. Yeah, let's read 38, please. Come, verse 38. And ye have not, Salaki, and ye have not his word abiding in you. Read. For whom he have sent, him ye believe not. Him you believe not. You don't believe the Son. Here's something I need you to understand. When the voice they heard came from heaven, it was an angel that was speaking from the chariots of God. That blew out. This is my beloved son. Hear you him. It was the angel that was speaking from the chariots of God. When they spoke, it bled out, and everyone heard it. That's why those, that's why, that's why his name continues to resound in history, because there are the, there are those who are still passing on to this very day, you know. My mother told me that when she was a little girl and she was by the river, when John was baptized, and um, after he was baptized, they heard a voice from the heaven that came from the clouds. And it said, this is my beloved son. And it was this, this man, this, this black man that was there. That has continued to resound through history, that information. Come. See that? All right. So now that we have that, you're clear then. It was an angel who spoke. It wasn't the father. What type of king would he be if he's doing all of his own dirty work? What type of God would he be if, if he has to do when he has servants in heaven who would do for him? Are you seeing this? I hope you're getting this. Because we, we, Christianity has caused us to bring our father down to a, a very communal level that, that, that they've got a nerve to, well, we speak to him. No, you don't. Now, who are you? Edomite. You definitely don't. Edom? <laughs> are you trying to kid me? No, he doesn't speak to you at all. Not at all. Let's go back, sir. Matthew chapter 3. 16. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 16, it reads, And Yehoshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, Read. and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. Go on. And lo, a voice from heaven a saying, what? A, a voice, voice from, from heaven, heaven saying, saying this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Whom I am well pleased. Go to John chapter 10 and 17. John chapter 10 and 17, please. Yes, sir. This is the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 17. Go ahead. It reads, Therefore doth my father love me. Hold it. Read it again, sir. John chapter 10, verse 17. Therefore, doth my father love me? Go on. Because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Go on. No man taketh it from me. Go on. But I lay it down of myself. So he lays it down of himself. Go on. I have power to lay it down. I, I have authority. Go on. And I have power to take it again. This commandment. Have I received of my father? See, he tells you where he gets it from. I ha I can do this because I received this from my father. That's right. How much clearer can we make this thing? Mm -hmm. Huh? 
Yeah, you, you, you begin to see now that this Trinitarian stuff, it's, it's all buckus, right? Um, uh, can I have a, a, a drink there, please? Thank you. So let's go on. Or the verse 19. Uh, no, read that again. If you don't. Come, John chapter 18. 10, verse 18. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. Go on. And I have power to take it again. To do what? Power to take it again. Yeah, go on. This commandment have I received of my father. It's a law. <laughs> it's a law. Hello. Go to Romans for me, please. Romans chapter 8 and 11. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Thank you, sir. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 11. It reads, But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahawashai... Read that again! But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahawashai from the dead... Go on. ...dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. So the same thing that was given to Yahawashai will be given to us. Come. Read it again, please. This is Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahawashai from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. He's also going to quicken your body to do the same thing. Uh, Is that not clear? Uh, do you get that, Isaiah? Now let's see, where do we go? Paul never wrote God the Father, God the Son. Mm. Paul never wrote God the Father or God the Son. There is no writings of Paul doing that. Galatians chapter 1 and 1, please. Yes, sir. The book of Galatians, chapter 1 and verse 1. I tell you what, because of time, just go straight to the point. Let's go to verse 3. Come. Galatians chapter 1. In verse 3, it reads, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father. From who? From God the Father. From God the Father. Go on. And from our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Hold it! He said, from God the Father and our Lord. See? He doesn't make them the same. He doesn't make them the same. He makes uh -huh. them different. They're different. Read it again for me, please. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 3. Grace be to you and peace from Yahweh the Father and from our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. See that? It makes it very, very clear. That's right. right. And if we were to read verse 4, watch what it says. Come, verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins. For our sins, go on. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. Go on. According to the will of God and our Father. See that? Uh. Makes it even more clear. God and our Father. God and our Father. You can't make this thing up. Ephesians chapter 6 and 3. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 6 and 3. Let, let's prove it even more. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 3. It reads, That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long in the earth. Go on. And ye, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up. In the nurture, in the and, what? In the, the nurture, nurture and uh, uh, so admission of the Lord. Of what? Admission oh, of the Lord. Lord. Go on. 
Servants, be obedient to them, that your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart, as unto Hamashiach. All right, drop that. What were you reading, sir? Ephesians 6. Yes, sir. Uh, jump uh, to verse 23, please. Come, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 23. Peace be to the brethren. Now, listen carefully now. Go on. Peace be to the brethren. Go on. And love with faith. From God. From who? From God the Father. Go on. And the Lord. Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Now you see that. Twice we've just read that. We've proven that twice. Come. See that? Twice. So that's no mistake. That's not a fluke here. All right. From here, let's go to 2 uh, Timothy. 2 mm -hmm. Timothy. Chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and verse 2. Come, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 2. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, and Hamashiach, Yahweh our Lord. See, again it says, from God the Father and our Son. Come on. Now, I, I hope the point has been proven. Shall I prove it two more times? <laughs> All right. As I suggest, so I, I, I will follow. To, uh, Titus chapter 1 and 4. Come. Titus chapter 1 and 4. Just quickly go there, if you please. The book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 4. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith. Go on. Grace. Mercy and peace from Yahweh the Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, our Savior. See that? And, and the, the very last time, Second John one and three. Second John one and three. Let's go there, if you please. Come. Second John one and three. Let's quickly go there. Please. The book of Second John, chapter one and verse three. It reads, Grace be with you, mercy and peace from Yahweh the Father and from the Lord Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, the Son of the Father in truth and love. Ouch. I, I, I think... It's a nail the coffin. Yeah. You, 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 you really... It, it, it sums itself. Any questions from anyone so far? Any questions? Any question? Yes, sir. Go ahead. So, truly, so if ministers are taught this, is it possible that they are basically literally lying to the people on purpose? Because I'm, I'm, and it's hard for me to believe that, that they missed this in their years of... I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. And that's why the, the word that you just chosen is not, is, is not wrong. Mm. They are indeed lying to the people to have got to this point where you can prove it. How many times did I prove that? Five times? Six times? Sure. See? So if you can prove that five times in the scriptures, how much more? And I'm sure that there are others. I'm sure that there are others, right? Let's take it a step further, shall we? Go to John, to John chapter 14 and 28. Let's go back there again. Come. My father is greater than that. Let's, let's go back there, please. Come. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. Read. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. I think we need some heat in here. Because I everyone put their coats back on. We can do that. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it should be good. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, just think. Yeah, I know you're going to be tired a little bit because of Sorry. Right. Good. All okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. John chapter 14, verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, 
I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. For my father is greater than I. So he says his father is greater than him. Now watch what else it says. Let's go from there to Isaiah chapter uh, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 25. Isaiah chapter 40. 4 0. Hmm. And 25, please. Yes, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, and verse 25, it reads, To whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? So, who's equal to him? Mm. He makes that very clear. There's none equal to him. So, if he's saying there's none equal to him, how are we saying that there is a son and a Holy Ghost mm. who operates in co-equalship to him. So who's lying? The church. They're actually saying that they're equal with the Father. They're equal with the That's Father! Can you lying. see that? Yeah. That's what they're saying. That they're equal with the Father. <sighs> they, man. They're telling us that the Catholic Church, really, yeah. they've, got some, they've got some power. <laughs> with God. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go back. Let's go back to um, St. John chapter 10. Yes, sir. And verse 17. Let's, let's run back there. St. John chapter 10. Let's read from verse um, 17 and 18 again. Yes, sir. The book of John chapter 10 verse 17. Therefore, doth my Father love me, because I laid down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Go on. I have power to lay it down. I have what? I have power, power to, to lay, lay it down. down. Go on. And I have power to take it again. To do what? I have power to take it again. Go on. This commandment have I received of my Father. That makes it absolutely clear. Come. All right. Now, I want to read on because I want to show something here. Read 19. Yes, sir. Verse 19. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews Go on. for these saints. For these saints. There it is. So it brings division. There it is. Let's read on. Let's, let's, let's see what he told me to be in the devil. Verse 20. And many of them said, He hath a devil. Go on. And is mad. Why hear ye him? Go on. Others said, These are not the words of him that have a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Read. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. The feast of the dedication. Let's drop that now. Okay. Uh, let's jump um, back down to verse 18. One verse 18. Uh, let me see if I want to go there. No, let's let's skip that. We'll go to Romans. Okay. Go to Romans 8 and, and 11. Romans 8 11. Because I'm, I'm looking at the time. Uh, we've dropped behind on time. So okay, okay. let's do that. The book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead Go on. shall also quicken your mortal body. Shall also do what? Quicken your mortal body. So he's the same spirit that's going to cause us to have power as well. Come. Go on. By his spirit. That dwelleth in you. By his spirit that dwells in us. That's right. Now hold that verse. We're going to come back to it. Run to John chapter 4 and 24. John 4 and 24. Yes, sir. This is the book of John. Chapter 4 and verse 24. It reads, God is a spirit. God is who? God is a spirit. Go on. 
and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How? In spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth. Got that? Come. Now, drop that. Leviticus chapter 11 and 45. We're coming back to... to, to, to um, we're coming back to Romans. Come. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 45. Go ahead, sir. It reads, For I am the Most High that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt Go on. to be your God. To do what? To be your, your God. God. To be your God. It's not to be everybody's God. That's right. Read it one more time, please. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. For I am the Most High that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt Go on. to be your God. To be your God. Go on. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. For I am holy. We must be like our Father, which is in heaven. That's why our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, so everything we do here is to be like our Father, which is in heaven. Done. All right? So from there, Psalms 99 and verse 5. Now we still come back to Romans. Psalms 99 and 5. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 99 and verse 5. It reads, Exalt ye the Most High our God. Go on. And worship at his footstool. For he is holy. For he is what? For he is holy. For he is holy. Sir. Is, is there someone holier than him? It, it says that he is holy, right? Mm. So we... I want to make sure that I'm doing my job. Give me how I said, I'm not good. Right. Only the Father, which I call him. For he is holy. All right? Now let's go back to Romans. Chapter 8 and verse 11. Come, Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead, from the dead dwell, in you, dwell in you, he that raised up Hamashiach from the dead. So the, the same spirit that raised him up, he's the one that's most holy as we read in Psalms. He's the one that's going, that is going to be our God. You see that? In fact, uh, uh, no, um, I'll bring that out again with, with, with the other scripture because I was going to bring it out with, uh, with Leviticus chapter 11 mm -hmm. but we'll, we can still do it within another scripture Come. All right, so, but let's finish that one please Come. He that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit by his what? by his spirit Three. that dwelleth in you that dwelleth in you Come. He is the top spirit. The Father is the top spirit. Therefore, everything that is at the top, it, it comes down. Who does it come down to first from the Father? That's a no-brainer. Come on. <laughs> to his son. The angels won't get it before him because he made the angels. The son made the angels. The Son made all things, and by, by Him all things stand because of the Son. So the Spirit came down from the Father to the Son. Then the Son made everything else and in the heavenlies, and the Spirit falls down on them. Come. Now that's where it stops, because it doesn't come to the earth yet. We're going to go all the way back to Genesis to see as to who does the Spirit fall on in Genesis. Mm. It's just beautiful the way it is. So, so there's no confusion here. Man has made it confused. That's right. You got that? Come, come. All right. So from here, uh, what did we finish at, sir? Come. This is at Romans uh, 8 and 11 again. All right. Ephesians chapter 4 and 3. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 4 and 3. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3. It reads, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3. 
Yes, Bring sir. their game from the top of your pants. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3. Endeavoring, so I can, and, and yeah, yeah, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the bond of what? In, in the, the bond, bond of peace. Go on. There is one body. There is what? There is one, one body. body. Now he's breaking it down to all of those who are, who he knew down in the in the future would try to bring confusion. So there is one body, read. And one spirit. There is one spirit, read. Even as ye are called in one hope. In one what? In one hope. Go on. Of your calling. Of what? Of your calling. Go ahead. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God, the oh, Father. Hold it. One what? One God, the Father. One God, the Father. Of all. Who is above all. And there it is. So if he's above all, the spirit comes down on who first? The spirit comes down. Well, don't do that. The others aren't. You mustn't do it. So if the spirit is at the top, who does it come down to first? We just said it. Yes, I know. It comes down on the on Yahushai first. Because he also bears the name of the Father. And he's the image of his father. Come on. Come on. Let's go back and read verse 6 again. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 6. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Read. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach. So it is the Amashiach, it is your Havashai who gives us our gifts. Come, come. That's why we all don't have the same gifts. I know you all want that, but you can't. He gives you all different gifts, and it's up to you to do with your gift as it pleases you. You can let that gift die, or you can let that gift grow. Come. You can't say you never had it, you had it, you just chose not to use come. it. So it makes it very, very clear that read some of the game in case anyone was missing that. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach. So this is in us all um, from the Most High God himself. Come. John chapter 14 and 26. Yes, sir. Now let's prove that gift situation from your, from your how which I we just read. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26, it reads, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, Go on. he shall teach you Go on. all things. So he teaches us all things. Go on. And bring all things to your remembrance. Some of us can't get no remembrance because we don't exercise the gift that he has given to us. Um, he won't give you anything if you don't use what you have. Um, he won't. Oh, I don't know why I can't do this. Because you don't exercise a gift. I don't know why I'm a fast. I, I can't run as fast. Because you don't go and run every day. To get fast, you must exercise and do a discipline. To become good at anything, you have to exercise and become good at it. But you have to do it every day. God. You want something for doing nothing. You're not going to get it. Read what you just read again, sir. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. In his name. Go on. He shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. All things to your remembrance. Hold that. Let's just read Jeremiah chapter 17 and 14 real quickly there. Let's deal with that remembrance for a quick minute. 17. Jeremiah 17 and 4. Come. Jer Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. It reads, Even thou, even thyself shall discontinue from thine inheritance, Go from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, 
which shall burn forever. Which shall do what? Which shall, shall burn, burn forever. forever. Which shall burn forever. Read on. Con, verse 5. Thus saith the Most High, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. Make what? Maketh flesh his arm. Go on. And whose heart departeth from the Most High. Go to Proverbs 1 and 23 real quick. Real quick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 23. It reads, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words I will unto pour you. Out my gifts unto you. Go on. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. So you see, if, if you if he's trying to give you something and you won't respond to it by doing the basic things with what you have, why, why should he give you more? In fact, you could you could pretty much see what a person's going to be in the kingdom because of their actions here. Can't? Uh -huh. it, it, it's self-explanatory right there. Huh? Uh -huh. Let's jump back if you please. Let's jump back real quick. John All right. 14, 26. Right, I want you to go back to John 14 and 15 now. Come. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Keep the what? Keep my commandments. Go on. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Another what? Another comforter. Now, what, what's that showing us is this. We all can receive the Spirit if we keep his commandments. Right? But you can't get nothing else if you don't exercise what you already have. To, in other words, because you receive the Spirit doesn't mean that you have the Spirit of Wisdom. You know that? Okay. Explain that to me, please, someone. Go Grace on. and peace, sir. Grace um, and peace. Wisdom, like it, it goes back to the wisdom of Solomon. It's a loving spirit. It only comes to those that are really seeking it and those that are doing everything they can to get it. But it's like God has given every man the measure of faith, but it's not the same measure. Uh, if you, you, well, has every to... man has the same measure of faith, meaning every man starts off with the same amount. Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. Every man starts off with the same amount. Every man and woman, all, we all have the same amount of faith to begin with. Huh. It's what you do with it. Absolutely. Some men, some women still have this much faith still. And then they wonder why. The only way you could have more is that you have to exercise the faith that you have. Then it gets bigger. And it gets bigger. Because faith increases with use. Mm. The lack of use of your faith keeps it where it is. In fact, that if you could have faith like this now, where your faith is like this, but because you failed to use it, what, what's what happens to your faith? Your, in the beginning, your faith grew to where it is. Now, why is your faith now contracting? Why is it, look, it's going smaller. It's going back to where it was. Why? Because lack of use. Mm -hmm. You use it, guess what happens? It starts to contract again. Or it starts to react. It starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Because your faith is designed to increase. It's designed to do that. But it only does that with your aid. That's why, notice when the man could not believe, he said to Yahweh Shai, help thou my unbelief. Mm. Increase my faith because I'm, I'm, ch I'm challenged here. You had your hand up. What do you want, sir? Uh, it, it, was a, it was a passage, I think Paul was saying, exercise your faith or exercise the gift that's in you. And I was, uh, and I was, and I was thought I found it, but it, it, it the scripture says, like, "Stir up the gift that is that's within." Is that the one you're speaking about? I think so. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, that's, that's not All right. All right. Let's let's move on. Go back and read verse 15 again. Come, the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. Go on. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Go on. And I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. Read. 
that he may abide with you forever. Read. Even the spirit of truth. Go on. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Read. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him. Read. For he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you without that spirit. Come. That's the spirit, the spirit that gives you comfort. Come on. Galatians 4 and 6. Because it's the spirit of the Son that is now in us. Let's go. Everybody turn. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 6. Let's go there, please. The book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 6. Now, why do I push that you, you go? Those of you listening online, the reason I push these people who are here to go to the scriptures is because the same way your muscles have memory, that's why some people, they, 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 they could be in this through five years and they still can't find a chapter and verse. Mm -hmm. They're struggling to find it. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you exercise yourself to turn to the scriptures, your mind and your fingers develop memory. Sure. And it's like your hands take you right to that scripture and you wonder how. It's because you have exercised it to do so. Khan, let's read. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 6. And because ye are sons, God have sent forth the spirit of his there son. There it is. See that? Khan. There it is. Read it again, sir. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 6. And because ye are sons, God have sent forth the spirit of of his son into your heart. Into your heart. Doing what? Crying, Abba, Father. Crying, Abba, Father. The word Abba simply means Father. Hmm. All right? Now, don't let some fool you, because they turn around and say the word Abba means Abraham. <laughs> no, wow. The word Abba does not mean Abraham. The wow. word Abba means Father. That's the, that's the Hebrew for it. Abba, Yah. Mm. All right, so there, if you please, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Now, we just read about the spirit of the Son that is in us, right? Now, let's read. 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 4. Come. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4, it reads, Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Read it again, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Read. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. See that? Diversities of gifts. Well, what does it say? But the same Spirit. The same Spirit. Go on. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. The differences of administration means methods of use. Methods of use. You see? Mm -hmm. Methods of use. How you use it. Go on. Come. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So it shows that that's why some camps do better than other camps. Because of how they utilize their gifts. You see? If you've got a camp that has men that are very strong and forward, that camp will be a very strong and forward camp. You get a camp that has weakness in it, the camp remains weak. Um, you are only as good as the links that you, that you are corresponding with. People don't always like to hear that, you see. But that's what the scripture says. Read on for me, please. Verse 7, but the manifestation but of the, the Spirit. But the showing of the Spirit, which is manifestation, go on. Is given to every man to profit with all. Because we can see how the gift is working in you because we see the demonstration of it. Read. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom, go on. To another. The word of knowledge. The word of knowledge, go on. By the same spirit. Go on. To another, faith by the same spirit. By the same spirit. I'm going to ask you what that means in a minute. Go on. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. By the same spirit. Explain verse 9 to me, please. 
But if you put your hand up, I'll call on you. Go on, sir. Praise and peace, sir. Uh, as we go through this chapter, it's, uh, it's like, especially at verse 9, he's saying that one person may have, because uh, everybody has a measure of faith, but one person has a certain type of faith, like Paul. He was a person that had faith that, that he could just see things that would come to see things that come to pass, and uh, and uh, like another person has the gifts of healing. Uh, and it's like there, uh, uh, you've got to make it clear. I'm confused a little bit there. Okay. Okay. Uh, one person may have, uh, 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 like they say, like when Yahusha said, if one can have, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say this mountain. He wasn't speaking about a literal month, well, could have been, but uh, he, he was saying, be removed in certain situations and circumstances. Well, like I use Paul as an example, because that's what's speaking right now. He, he could see that, and he was in Corinthians setting that church in order. I, I tell you what, let me help you out just a little bit. Read verse 10, sir. Read 10 and 11, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Yeah. Oh, okay. God. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. Go on. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Read. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Go on. To another, the, in like the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing every man. Severally, as he will. Now, make it clear based yeah, on that. Just basically what you were saying just a few minutes ago. Everybody doesn't get the same thing. Come on. Because the answer is right there. So he's telling you it's the same spirit, but we have different uses of it. We all use different things or attain different things within that. In other words, why is it that one, one brother... He just has the skill to be able to just put together precepts. He, it's, it's, you leave him out alone, he, he can find a precept for that, and he's right on it. Okay. Another brother can explain the scriptures, um, like put the spirits on him, and, and you can just see him just break it down clearly. And another brother just can't do it, right? No matter how many times you ask. And then there are some who have the gift where they can lay hands on someone and pray, believe in, and see the healing done. Yeah. Believe it. I, I'm going to lay hands on I'm, I'm going to pray for you, my brother. I'm going to pray for you, my sister. And we'll pray and see the healing and see the upliftment of that spirit of that person. Same spirit, but different diversities of it. Yeah. Can't? And that's what this is, this is showing us. It says the same spirit. That's why, read verse 10 again, if you please, sir. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. To another, the working of miracles. See, what miracles, go on. To another, prophecy. To, to, another, to, to another what? Prophecy. To another, prophecy. Go on. To another, discerning of spirits. Go on. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Meaning that the spirit can come on that person and they can speak different languages. Now, a person said, oh, that, that, that doesn't exist today. Well, let me prove it. There was just uh, three months ago, maybe less than three months ago, a young black boy was playing football. And he got uh, kicked in the head. Mm -hmm. and the kick was so severe that it put him in a coma. He woke up eventually out of that coma a month or so later. And he was glad to see his mother. He was glad to see his father and his brothers and sisters. And when he, when he saw them, he started to greet them in Spanish. God. And he, he was, they were saying, what's wrong with you? We don't understand you. And, and he was saying in Spanish to them, what do you mean you don't understand me? I'm speaking perfectly clear, but he's speaking Spanish. He's speaking Spanish like he was raised in Spanish. Sure. There was no checks, no uh, stuttering. His Spanish was fluent. And they didn't know how that happened. 
The doctors were now shocked and they're saying, did he, was he studying Spanish? Did he have some kind of Spanish, whatever? And they said, no, he, hasn't he, he just loves football. He got kicked in the head and now he speaks Spanish. And you know what? It, it, it has taken him um, a while just to learn English. Yeah. So he's back now to learning English. But his first language Spanish. is Spanish. <laughs> now, isn't that something? So when people say that doesn't exist, let's go back and read what the scriptures say, because I only believe what this book says. And it says, it says, um, um, it says, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues. Go on. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. As he what? As, as he, he will. will. As he wills. See, that makes sense to you so far? All right, from here, let's go to James 1 and 17. <laughs> James 1 and 17. Yes, sir. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 17, it reads. I'll start winding down, so go ahead. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Say that again. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Why does it say good gifts? Mm. Because there are some gifts that are bad. Why does it say perfect gift? Because there are some gifts that are not perfect. Read on, sir. And cometh down from the Father. From who? From the Father. So we see that all gifts come from the Father. Finish it for me, please. Of lights. Oh, go on. With whom is no bearableness, neither shadow of turning. Neither shadow of turning. All right. Let's go to Acts chapter 5 and 1. Acts chapter 5 and verse 1, please. Yes, sir. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 1. It reads, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Go on. And Peter said, listen carefully. But now, so for some of you who don't know the story, let me just quickly tell you hmm. that the word Ananias simply means grace, and the word and the name of the other one, Sapphira, simply means law. Okay. So, um, so, uh, so. Uh, and Ananias name basically is more associated with the grace of God, right? Sapphira's name is associated with the new church. Mm. Okay? So that's kind of what that, that means. And remember, Sapphira comes from the word uh, sapphire, which is a stone. That is one of the stones of Israel. Have you got that? Come, come. That's just a quick snippet on that. So let's go through it. Verse 2, and kept back part of the price his wife, also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? Go on. And after... It was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Go on. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Now what does that mean? Everybody reads this at some point in your life. You would have read this. And most people read it and don't get it. What does it mean? Anyone? Anyone, please. What does it mean? Yes, sir. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. He thought he was getting over on there, but the father knew what was happening. So when he brought what he brought, he was thinking he was just saying it to him, but it was actually saying it to, it to the presence of the father because he was there with the men. He was what? He was he was when he was when he was when he was saying this is all we got, 
he was not uh, he was not really like when, Paul, when when he said you're not lying to men but under God. He said you you brought this thinking this was just about us, but really your father is the one that you're bringing this to. So by you saying that this is all you got, you're not lying to us. You you're trying to lie to him. And he knows very him. good, very good. Because let's read it again, sir. Come. Acts chapter 5 and verse 2. And no, um, uh, start three, verse 4. Three. Verse 3. Come. But Peter said, And the night, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? To lie to the Holy Ghost. Come. The question would be, well, where is the Holy Ghost then? The <laughs> Holy Ghost is in Peter. Come. Peter was keeping the law. He was keeping himself upright. Therefore, he was acting in the space of Yahweh. So when they lied to him, they weren't lying to Peter. They were lying to the spirit that was on Peter that was acting through the Holy Ghost. So then, then he says, read, come, and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after uh, was it sold? Was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. But unto God. You see, because he's acting in the space of God. Come. All right. Um, read. Uh, I, I think that's enough. I think we get it. You, you get it? Let's read verse 5 just to help you. Come. For those verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Now, the reason why this is important that it happened there, because our people only believe what they see. Mm -hmm. and that's one of our weaknesses. That's why we see something, we believe it. We, we don't, we're not quick to believe what we hear. Mm -hmm. That's why the scripture said, blessed are they that that have seen and not that have not seen and yet believe. Who have not seen and yet believe. There's a blessing on that for that person. As I said, if we were to follow all of the laws, we would be impregnable as such people. Mm -hmm. But we don't. You see, and we always question. Here is telling us if you if you if you keep those sins, you're good. If you don't keep it, then you're going to be in trouble. Come, come, see come. that? All right. So from here, uh, let's quickly drop that. Go to Matthew chapter 28, 19. We're, we're finishing up. We're, we're finishing up. It's just that this is, we can't make this a two-parter. I have to finish it today, so I, I hope you can bear with me. I'm sorry for the delay that we had earlier because of technical problems. That's why many of you were not able to, to view this live. But I hope you're able to view it now. Khan? All right. So Matthew 28, 19. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 19, read. it reads, Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations. Now, the, this that you're reading is one of the most <laughs> used scripture in the Trinity. That's right. Trinitarians love this scripture, and they use it as their scripture to try to destroy those who believe otherwise. All right? Can I see your faces? I don't want to see your heads. I want to see your faces. Sure. So, when we read this now, it tells us clearly something here. Read it again, if you please. The book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 19. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations. Do what? And teach, teach all, all nations. nations. Now, when it says all nations, who are the all nations? It's talking about the people that spread and that spread the information. Israel. Come. So it's speaking about Israel that has spread throughout the world. Oh. Now, let me help you out a little bit. So it says all nations, and then it says what? Read, Captain. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Read. And of the Son. Read. And of the Holy Ghost. Now, there is no such writing in the Bible. There is no such writing. <coughs> I've seen the original text, and in the original text, that does not exist. My mother had an old, 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 old Bible, which I wish today I would have had in my position. 
I would wish to have that Bible. It's not in my possession now. In that Bible, you will open up to this verse. It does not show baptizing in, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. It only shows baptize. It says, it says, uh, go and teach all nations in my name. Mm. Mm. It's an old translation. Now, to prove it, you can do your own research. Don't take my word for it. There is an old uh, prophet by the name of St. Jerome. St. Jerome. He is the translator of the Latin Vulgate. Latin Vulgate. Vulgate. V-U-L-G-A-T-E. Latin Vulgate. The books that he is associated with are a catalog of the fathers of the church and ecclesiastical writers to the 15th century, 1850, by C.J. Stewart. C.J. Stewart. I won't repeat it, you just have to rewind it if you want to find that information out. In that, Matthew wrote this. This is what Matthew wrote. Matthew, who is also Levi, composed a gospel in the Hebrew tongue and characters. Furthermore, the Hebrew itself is preserved to this day in the library of Caesarea. Mm, we could still find it there. Which the martyrs, or the martyrs, Pamphilius, so diligently collected. Okay? Now, what St. Uh, Jerome actually did, he accessed a couple of books through Eusebius. Eusebius is a writer that is similar to that of Josephus. Mm. In fact, you will find books that's called Eusebius of Caesarea. The books that he is known for on a scholarly level is number one. The ancient Christian text is one of them. The second is ecclesiastical history. Now the original quote is go and make disciples to all nations in my name. teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command to do. Matthew chapter 28 and 19. That's the original. Carl? Right. Yes, sir. And St. Jerome, he was also our people, yes? So say again? He was also our people. He was our people. Jerome. I have, uh, I have books. I decided not to bring them today because if I brought those books they take up a bit of time and as you can see today it's just as well it's for, because otherwise technically we would have had problems anyway can't we? but with St. Jerome you'll see there are pictures of him and they show him they, they're trying to make him look like he's white <laughs> they really are but in the drawer they, they paint his skin dark they try to give him a flowing white man beard white man's hair, but they make him very dark. Isn't that interesting? <clears throat> but I've seen later generations of that type of painting, and they show him completely outright white. Mm. See that? Any question? 
It's cold in here. It really is, because I'm having trouble even breathing at this point. No, you, you're, you're already feeding the thing or something. Yeah, he gets out, out there, everybody, notice, everybody else out there, I'm saying, Jack is all up. But you get they blazing up there. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the trumpets. <laughs> I am. <clears throat> that means you can't go to Africa with me then. <laughs> I'm <will> just. <laughs> I will just. I will just. Can. All right. Okay. So, any questions from anyone? Any questions? Any questions from the sisters? Any questions from the sisters? <coughs> You're all good? Do you have a question? Yeah. We'll go ahead. What is your question? I'm now on an, an an item of virus. Right. God's grace. And Sapphira meaning a type of a new church. Your question is? Sorry? Yeah, the, the, the name Sapphiras comes from a stone. In the in 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 the in the mineral world, they have the, the stones obviously have different names. One of them is called sapphire, mm -hmm. where we get the word sapphiras from. Alright? All right. Okay. Uh, let's finish this up, shall we? Now, uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay. Let me just explain this, and, and then we're going to push ahead because I need to quickly uh, follow up with that. <clears throat> uh, the words that you find, such as "in the name of the Father," "in the name of the Son." And in the name of the Holy Ghost does not exist in the scriptures. Mm. All right? Go to Acts 2 uh, 38 for me, please, sir. Let's just run there. Turn. Let's prove some points. The book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Shai In the name of what? In the name hey. of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. For the remission of sins. Notice, it only says in the name of Yahawashai. Right? Um. Now, we're going to prove just like Paul proved when he spoke about the fact that there, there, there's no... Um, it, um, he, he, he always says in the name of our, 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 our God, he was our Father and our, and, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul always teaches that. Come. Come. Now we're going to prove that here again, Paul proves that there is only in the name of Yahweh. There's no other name. No other name. So, if we will go forward and read, go with me, and I want to see you turn to these pages. I want to see you turn to these pages. Acts chapter 8 and 16. <laughs> the book of Acts. Chapter 8 and verse 16, Go it on. reads, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai. Now, you see that again? It has the name of Yahweh Shai. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 10 and 48. The book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 48, it reads, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed <coughs> they him to tarry certain days. Let's just see. see that? Come. Acts 19 and 5. The book of Acts, chapter 19 and verse 5, it reads, When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Acts 22 and 16. Acts chapter 22 and verse 16. It reads, And now thy tarriest thou, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. 
So, have you seen anything that says, um, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost? It doesn't exist. You will not find one part of the scripture where that is written. Now, they are trying to rewrite the Bible over and put those things in. Yeah. <coughs> it's a particular group of people that are doing that. Yeah. I showed you um, an article, and I think I sent it out to some of you. Do you remember what that article was? Who can remember when the article was? Anyone? Anyone? It's vague. You sent us something that they were doing in the, I don't know if it was a Vatic or something, they were changing the, changing the things in the Bible. It's, it's called the Bible corruption. It's 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 it came into public review in 1969. Go ahead, Richard. Come, Bible corruption in 1969. Dr. Richard Day was a professor of pediatrics, the University of Pittsburgh, and Mount Sinai Medical School in New York and National Medical Director of Planned Parenthood, which is funded by the government, the Rockefeller Foundation, and private donors. Dr. Lawrence, Dr. Lawrence Dungan was practicing pediatrician in Mount Laban, uh, Pennsylvania, for over 34 years. The following is quoted from his rec recollections of a lecture he attended on March 20th, 1969, at a meeting of pediatri pediatricians. Come. The transcribed document titled NWO's Planned Exposed by Insider in 1969. Now, now, by the way, the NWO's is a new world order. Huh. Part of the New World Order is to change the Bible, that the Bible does not speak uh, using the full Hebrew, the correct wording, and and have in there what known as a Trinitarian standpoint. Come. Outlines the complete destruction of the world based on the New World System. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion gradually. Key words will be replaced with new words, having various shades of meaning. That's why you'll find that the Bible, uh, especially some of these new Bibles, they have different things. Now watch, there is right now a homosexual Bible. If you read it, you'll be mind blown. It, because it actually, it, they've actually written in certain things about David and Jonathan, they have rewritten certain things in with Jehoshai, with the 12 men. The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to be mindful of what's out there right now because it's done to corrupt. But read, sir. Come. Then the meaning attached to the new words can be closed to the old word. And, it has, and as time goes on, close. other... It's close. Salakia. Yes, I says, then the meaning attached to the new word can be close to the old word. And as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized. And then gradually that word replaced with another word. Right. I don't know if I'm making that clear, but the idea is that everything in scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words. It says variability or variability in meaning attached to any word can be used as a tool to change the entire meaning of scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this new religion. Most people won't know the difference and this was another one of the times where it says where he... Uh, 
Any questions on that? Yes, sir. They have already started. Grace and peace, Pastor. They have already started. I just read this morning. I didn't. And then come to mind that this lady here, the 1619 Project lady, and instead of putting slave, now they put enslaved person. They're changing the words, and the CRT is the beginning of what we're talking about here right now. Well, that's part of the school situation in terms of, of, of people. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was actually, when you hit the nail on the head, um, the uh, so called um, um, history being erased, mm -hmm. um, uh, they have a term for it. It just left, it just left me. Um, Race theory, right? Race theory. They call it race theory. That's just amazing. Race theory to where they're rewriting to where it does, it's not racism anymore. We're immigrants. And that's like they were just saying, you take out key words mm -hmm. and call us immigrants. Well, I'm sorry, but that's a heavy word uh. to call me an immigrant. <laughs> After so much history, we're saying we were forced. Well, remember, the reason why they're doing that is because if they, if they change the words, Let's say anyone in here had, had a child. That child will be raised under the idealism right. that their foreparents mm -hmm. did not, were not forced to come to this country or okay. to any other country. For okay. right. Right. But they came of their own volition. <laughs> That's why this thing has been going on since 1969 and slowly infiltrating its way into society, into law, into schools, into government, etc., etc., etc. Correct. So we haven't seen the, 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 the last of it yet. It's going to get worse. But, but here's why it has such a devastating effect here in America. Because Americans have become somber. Mm. The so-called black American has become quiet. They're neutered. They've got to speak out. That's right. You can't be in the company of others and when they have a conversation, you keep your mouth shut and just listen. Or oh, I just like to listen. You're an idiot. Mm -hmm. Let me say it again. You're an idiot. Come. Someone says something derogatory against your people, your history. Have the nerve, have the presumption to speak up and tell them you are lying. Call it what it is. Huh. They used to have a term over here. They used to say they call a spade a spade. Well, we're going to call you out. You're a liar. That's right. What is to say? You're a four flushing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't huh. remember those cowboy terms. But let's finish this off because uh, I'm, I'm basically finished. The final one that we're going to deal with is 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Yes, sir. 1 John. Everybody should know that one because that's the one that is an arguing point. First John chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Go ahead and read it if you please. The book of First John chapter 5 and verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. Now, let me explain something. <laughs> uh, there is something that is called, um, there's something that is called uh, the NU. You need to write it down, because you will forget feel like a lecture. Well, after the first month of telling me that, I never need anyone to tell me that. But here's the thing. And you. Has anybody ever heard that expression, that term? It's a letter N and U. They are, they are used for, N is used for the Nestles, Alan, Greek. Nestle, Alan, a L A N D, Alan Greek. The twenty sixth edition. All right. The U stands for United Bible Society third edition. United Bible Society third edition. These books have the original writings in them mm. that's why when you when you when you read this scripture here 
check your Bible in terms of its reference, either at the very bottom of the page or in the column. Sometimes they have it more at the bottom. I have old Bibles that have it at the very bottom. I've got Bibles going back to the 1800s. In those Bibles, it has the term NU. And it tells you that those words that are written here in verse 7 and verse 8 are words not written in the original transcript. That's what it says. Mm. It is not written in the original transcript. Now, in the original transcript, this is what it says. Let's read verse. It's not that we can't work with it, because many of us do. I can work with it, because you've got to take a scholarly approach to verse 7 and 8. That's why I can work with it. But if you're not scholarly, you'll be trapped into thinking, well, th th that's not there. And ha, ha, I don't trust the Bible. Don't be simple-minded. Mm. Don't be simple-minded. You're eating a piece of steak. There happens to be a corner that, that, that has some fat on it. Cut it off, throw it away, and continue to eat the steak. Mm. Don't be simple-minded. So here it goes. It says, for, the, for there are three that bears record. That's where it stops. Verse 7. Wow. Verse 8 begins where it says, The Spirit and the water and the blood and those three agree in one. All the rest before verse uh, 8 does not exist. In other mm -hmm. words, there are three that bear witness. That's, that does not exist. To further prove it, if you were to go back and read what's called the common, oh, sorry, comma, Johanna, comma, C O M M A, comma, Johannum, Johannum, J O H A N N E U M, and the uh, 1522, that has all the evidence to prove what I'm, I'm saying. Got that? And uh, it was the reason why what you read is in the Bible now because that was put in there by Darius Erasmus or Erasmus E R A uh, E R A S M U S Darius Erasmus. Now he put that there because of. The, the political powers that were coming against them at that time to ensure that Trinitarianism would have a strong hold, and it has. See that? So that's why those two scriptures, and notice they are in the New Testament mm -hmm. where you find your challenges. You don't find too many in the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament, really, the only thing that you find there is, is where they have made the transliteration of a word from Hebrew to, to the English word and it hasn't translated properly. But other than that, there is no grammatical errors there. The grammatical errors is in Matthew as well as it is in John chapter 5. Can't? Can't. Does that make sense? Now that's 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 all I want, want to give to you today. I hope that has been sufficient. I hope it's been a blessing. Please excuse my, my allergies. They put me in this cold cold hall. <laughs> everybody else enjoys it, but I like heat. But I've got to I've got to work with everybody else. And, and I'm a team player. <laughs> yeah. The word team, everybody achieves more. All right, so. Any questions, please? Anyone? 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 Whoa. Uh, Captain, would you like to share anything that's uh, in your spirit? Uh, kind of, kind of. Um, again, it's like we just got this lesson off and give all honor and glory and praise to Yahweh, Bashim um, Shai, to, to get this understanding to uh, it's a It is amazing because I didn't come up uh, learning, as, as most of you, about the Trinity. 
That wasn't that. That's what I was. Praise sold. be to the Most High. Praise be to that's the Most good. High. Kind. I wasn't. I wasn't giving that Kool Aid, right? About three and one. That's madness. I, I, of course, I still would have left the church, but that's still madness. That's cartoonish, if you will, at best, uh, to have a god running with three heads <laughs> in three different directions. Um, but also, uh, not only that, it still shows you how um, they've already come out with all these different uh, additions, right? You had the ESV, the NLT, the NIV, right? The RSV, showing you all these different um, additions of the Bible, trying to water it down to make all these uh, factions or sects in the Bible uh, legal, if you will. Uh, being First Presbyterian, being Seventh-day Adventist, being Lutheran, um, all these uh, different sects com coming out of one doctrine, Roman Catholicism, right? Roman Catholic Church. So it's just amazing how um, they've done this to uh, conf confound most of us. But what they forget is the Most High has made all these things done by himself. He has orchestrated all these things done by himself so that of those who in the beginning come back unto him, the elect come uh, back unto him. That's his plan. That's not man's plan. Con, that's the amazing part about it. All right, well, we want to uh, thank you all for all that you have uh, done in terms of your subscribing as well as your likes. So we pay you continue to like what you're hearing. And if you have any comments, please put your comments in. We certainly always uh, answer the comments. Um, again, uh, we accept whatever comments you want to give. Um, now, for those who are negative or want to come and use this as a tennis court to go to bat back with the forth, we say to you, uh, no thanks. <laughs> if, if you want to have a proper, intelligent uh, dialogue, we will certainly accommodate you. That's right. But to get into bickering when we're a little bit too uh, old under the gills to play childish games. Um, now, if you would, would like to send a question and, and you would like us to open it up by way of teaching, we certainly would do that. We give all honor, honor to the presence of the Most High God for all that he has done to give us revelation for these things. And we pray that you continue to tune in each week, that you are blessed. And for those of you that, that give, please continue to give. God. And uh, for those of you that are still waiting on certain products that we have for you, um, we thank you for your patience. To all our viewership who comes uh, from overseas, from those in England, um, Northern England, as well as London, as well as Europe, those of you from the southern parts of Africa, as well as the north and eastern section of Africa, we want to give all praises to the Most High God. Sure. Uh, we want to say much greetings, and we look forward to speaking with you again. Sorry we were not able to do a live broadcast this week, but due to some technical problems. But we look forward to being with you again on the next Sabbath. And we say all praises to the Most High God, for He is good. And we say, Oh, brother, brother.